Hi, I'm Darren Ferrugia and welcome. Often when we're taught about grooves, when we watch videos or DVDs or whatever about you know, developing a good groove, one of the things that a lot of people will talk about or mention in these instructional videos is you know, laying back on two and four, making sure that you're laying back. And that's pretty much a hard concept to uh, internalize when there are, in my opinion, a few more important things that we need to deal with first. And today I'm gonna to deal with one of those things. So before we start thinking about how far to lay back the snare drum on two and four, we need to think about the importance of being able to play an accurate unison between the right hand and the right foot. If you're a right-handed drummer and a right-footed drummer, the right hand and the right foot need to be able to play pinpoint accurate uh, unisons. So let's say if you're playing a rock groove, you've got a bass drum on beat one and a bass drum on beat three. So at a very basic level, it's important that the right hand playing the hi-hat um, is absolutely accurate with the bass drum on those two beats, beats one and beat three. So I, I like to work on this because I'm, I'm always trying to work on my groove and always trying to you know work out what my weaknesses are. And this is one of those kind of maintenance practice exercises that I like to pull out from time to time. So the point of this exercise is really just increasing the accuracy of the unison between the right hand and the right foot, the hi-hat and the bass drum. I guess I've made my point by now. So in order to play this exercise, I'm going to use syncopation exercise one from Ted Reed's uh, syncopation book. I think most of you might know what that is. So syncopation exercise one has become a, a kind of industry standard for developing independence and other exercises. There are lots of ways that you can actually play this exercise um, rather than just as a reading exercise. So I'm gonna use that exercise. So. Let's start. What I'm gonna do is play eighth notes on the hi-hat. One and two and three and four and. etc. Then what I'm gonna do is take that reading exercise, syncopation exercise one, otherwise known as page 37, currently known as page 38. I'm gonna take that exercise and superimpose that exercise on top of those eighth notes on the hi-hat as accents. So effectively, this is what we end up with. Um, I'll play the first four bars. One, two, three, four. Now the next step is to add the bass drum with the accents. So wherever I'm playing an accent on the hi-hat, I'll be adding the bass drum to that. Now the point of this exercise, as I said, is we're just gonna aim to get those right hand and right foot strokes, or those right hand and right foot unisons as accurate as possible. Here we go. One, two, three, four. The next step is to add a backbeat of some sort. So in this instance, I'm gonna add the backbeat to beats two and four, just our standard two and four backbeat. Let's give this a go. One, two, three, four. The other option is to add the backbeat onto beat three to give it a halftime feel. That will sound like this. One, two, three, four. So that's the kind of halftime version with the snare drum on beat three. I'm gonna play that version for the first eight bars of the syncopation exercise. One, two, three, four.
Here's the first eight bars using the two and four on the snare drum. One, two, three, four. So the next part of this exercise to kind of take it up a notch in terms of a challenge is to do the opposite of what I did before. Instead of playing the bass drum with all of the accents, I'm now going to play the bass drum with all the non-accents. So anything that isn't accented on the hi-hat becomes a bass drum stroke as well. This is important because it's very easy to fudge, let's say, fudge the accuracy between the bass drum and the non-accented notes on the hi-hat. And it's also important to have the independence to be able to play an accent or a strong stroke on the bass drum whilst at the same time playing a light stroke on the hi-hat. So here's the exercise. Um, I'm going to play exactly what I did before, just the first four bars of the syncopation exercise, but now the bass drum is playing on the non-accented strokes. Just hi-hat and bass drum for now. Here we go. One, two, three, four. As I did before, I'm going to add the snare drum on beats two and four, and I'm going to play the first eight bars of the syncopation exercise. One, two, three, four. And this time I'll play the snare drum on beat three to give it a half time feel or a slow 16th note feel if you want to think of it that way. And again, I'll also play the first eight bars of this exercise. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now they are the exercises. These are great ones to practice. I suggest that you practice these slowly and I would also suggest that you practice these with a metronome and feel free to add the eighth note subdivision to the metronome as well so that you can kind of getting an idea of how accurately you are actually playing your strokes. Um, if you want to download a copy of the PDF that accompanies this video, I will leave a link to that in the description below. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button. If you haven't done so already, subscribe. And remember to hit the notification bell so that you know when I've uploaded a video, which is every week. So until next week, enjoy this exercise. Um, I hope you get some mileage out of it and I hope it has a good effect on your playing and your groove playing as well. And uh, I will see you all next week. Take it easy and bye. What am I going on about? I was just raving. That was just rubbish. Until next week. Happy practice. Happy practice. Why do I keep saying that?